Matt Dumba found a style of play that will likely lead to him getting another contract elsewhere in the NHL. We evaluate Dumba's 2022-2023 season today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome in, Wild fans. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we evaluate Matt Dumba's 2022-2023 season. We look at the improvements he made defensively down the stretch and where he could end up next with his days in Minnesota likely gone. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, and it's the same story that we have known uh, about Matt Dumbo over the last couple of years is just a guy who is not able to give you what he used to be able to offensively. And it changed at the end of the season, though, because Dumba's never really been known as a defensive defenseman. But down the stretch, we saw a guy who I think understood finally that that is going to be the part of his game that he's going to have to improve in order for him to be uh, a productive defenseman in the NHL. He started to be more physical down the stretch and started to be more responsible defensively for the Wild uh, over the last six weeks or so of the season and even into the postseason. Dumbo was a pleasant surprise in that series against the Dallas Stars as well. And so for a veteran defenseman that was always, always an offensive defenseman, finally kind of figuring out how to do it without doing what he used to do was big for Matt Dumba's post-Minnesota career. We know where things stand, and we'll talk about this more at the end of the show today, but we know where things stand. It's it's highly doubtful that Dumbo will be coming back to Minnesota. And so you wrap up the wild portion of the career, and now his big thing is trying to find a fit elsewhere. And what do teams see in him uh, as, a, uh, as a defenseman moving forward, as a veteran, who can be a good locker room guy, who can be uh, good in the community, some of those other intangibles off the ice, he can bring you all that. Do we see more of him being uh, a physical defenseman uh, for the next few years to try to kind of keep his career going? That's the big question. But just looking at the uh, stats for Dumba overall, he did play in 79 games this year. And ironic that two of the others that he missed were uh, by being scratched because just took a ton of penalties this year. So all told, 79 games for Dumba. He had four goals, 10 assists. Those 14 points were a career low. Those four goals were a career low as well. Uh, was a minus eight, which was a career low. 81 penalty minutes was a career high, besting his previous mark of 59, set back in 2016-2017. Uh, was really not a factor at all in the power play. Uh, did not have any power play points. Uh, finished the year with 99 shots on goal, which was near the bottom in terms of his career averages. It wasn't his lowest amount in a full season. And uh, his time on ice dipped as well to 21 minutes, 17 seconds. But you look at some of the other numbers, um, 116 blocks, that was a career high for Dumba uh, in that category. And 104 hits uh, was the third most that he has had in a, uh, a season. Uh, but, you know, you look at the takeaway giveaway ratio, he had 17 takeaways and 35 giveaways. So a lot of what we see on the ice reflected in those statistics and a guy who 
was prone to turnovers, especially early in the season, especially in the wild defensive zone. A guy who just is not – Dumble was always known for having that blistering slap shot, but he just has not been able to uh, to do that anywhere close to what he used to be able to. And so he has been robbed of a little bit of that um, offensive potential. And so you see that reflected in some of these numbers where the defensive numbers have uh, have risen and the offensive numbers have uh, have started to really kind of settle to the bottom. Now, in terms of defensemen, his ranks are as follows. Dumbo was second amongst wild defensemen in goals with four um, and second with shots with 99, second in hits with 104, fourth in blocks. His goals against per 60 at 2.02 was fifth among wild defensemen. Uh, His goals for per 60, 1.86, which was seventh. Um, And, you know, played 10 minutes on the power play. Was really not a factor there. But you look at what he did on the penalty kill. He had 143 minutes, 30 seconds of ice time there, which was fourth amongst wild defensemen. The penalty kill goals against per 60 of 2.51 was seventh and the expected goals against of 1.39 was fourth. So middle of the pack um, in terms of some of those numbers for goals against, but uh, some of the other statistics actually near the top of the, uh, of the leaderboard for wild defensemen. And as mentioned for Dumba, you know, wasn't, uh, wasn't statistically able to, uh, to do what he has done in the past, because let's not forget, Dumba was a um, he was a double digit goal guy. Uh, in fact, topped out at fifty points for the 2017-2018 season. But he had double digit goals for four straight seasons, including twelve goals in thirty two games in 2018-2019. And um, after that, the offense just really fell off the face of the earth. And so um, it was interesting to see kind of this evolution of Dumba throughout uh, the uh, last few games of the season. He finished the postseason with two assists. He was uh, even in the plus minus category and uh, took just nine shots. So pretty, pretty much what we have come to expect from Dumba. It just was, it was nice to see him finish the season on a stronger note than he started um, with, I'm sure, understanding that this was likely going to be his uh, final few games of his Minnesota career. So left it all out on the line, and it was unfortunate that the Wild weren't able to uh, to go further, but it's uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. And so uh, it was it was very much an uneven season for Matt Dumba here uh, in 2022-2023. Now we'll take a look at specific letter grades. Again, offense, defense, special teams, playoffs, and overall. And so we'll, uh, we'll talk about those as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode is brought to you by a product I use every single day of the week. That is AG1 by Athletic Greens. Maybe you're like me. You want to eat healthy and eat well, but it's always easier said than done. There's no longer the case with AG1. With one delicious scoop of AG1 and a glass of water each day, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It can be hard and expensive to keep track of multiple different supplements and vitamins, not to mention how hard it can be on your stomach. AG1 costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. 
Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thanks for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. If this is your first time tuning in, we welcome you into the show and hope you stick with us throughout the rest of the offseason and into next season as well. If you are an everyday listener, we're glad to have you back along here today. And for the everydayers, we will be uh, taking a look at the announcement uh, that is expected to come today of uh, a new Iowa Wild head coach. Rumor is it'll be longtime Wild assistant Brett McClain. And so we'll talk about that for tomorrow's episode, just some reaction, what it means for the Wild, what it means for Iowa um, on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Wild. So let's get to the letter grades for Matt Dumba. We'll start with offense. And I mean, it's it's been pretty consistent over the last few seasons. After that fight, that Dumba just has not been the same guy uh that he was before that uh, that injury happened. Uh, f- career low in goals this year, career low in points, um, and just, you know, you look at it, 99 shots, he shot 4% for the season. It, it's got to, for me, be probably an F. He just is not able to produce really at all, uh, and a majority of the goals that he did have right in front of the net. And so that was Dumba's biggest asset as a defenseman was that he was able to step up in the play and just laser shots past uh, opposing goalies. But without that firepower on offense now, it's, it's a lot of just kind of trying to get put in the right position to make plays. And so I'm, I'm going with, I'm going with an F for, uh, for offense for the season for Dumba. And I don't know what the future has in store for, uh, for Matt, because you're, you're seeing just a gradual decrease in those numbers. Was this year kind of the, the floor or is there a floor lower for him to go uh, for wherever he ends up next? So F for offense for defense, I'm going to go with a C minus. I mean, I, we got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, Dumba was fantastic down the stretch for about the final six weeks of the season. And so while the early part of the season was not great, you had the turnovers, the the penalties just racking up and really becoming a huge problem. Uh, he was able to overcome that and got to the point where he actually played some good defense down the stretch by being more aware of, of what was going on around him and had a couple of games where he like legitimately stepped into the net to save a few goals with either Flurry or Gustafson sprawled out trying to make saves and the, the uh, puck coming loose. Dumba had a couple of critical blocks in that category and career high in blocked shots. A, another 100 hit season for Dumba. He was throwing his weight around like the Matt Dumba of old. And so I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt there. The overall body of work, not great, but that stretch to finish the season was uh, was pretty darn good for, uh, for Matt Dumba. So I'm going with a C- minus for defense. Special teams, not a factor hardly at all on the power play. And uh, kind of middle of the pack for the penalty kill amongst wild defensemen. So I think I'm going to, in that case, go with, um, I'll go with a C minus two. He's not going to be your top guy on the penalty kill. Save that for uh, for Spurgeon, Middleton, Brodeen. Those guys are higher up in the lineup, but he did get a lot of time on that second unit and the second unit, the penalty kill in general in the regular season was a few percentage points better than last year. So I'm, I'm going with a, a C minus there Postseason, I'm going with the B plus. I mean, he was just was really not high up on the list of problems for this team. I mean, you want to look at defensive breakdowns, Spurgeon, Brodeen wasn't great. And so 
for Dumba to be able to kind of chip in defensively was big. And so I'm going to go B plus because that, that strong finish to the end of the season really carried over into the postseason for Dumba. And it, it was, again, it was great to see. He has been a fun player to, uh, to follow during his time here. And so to see him kind of get back something that works down the stretch was, uh, was really good to see. And overall body of work uh, for Dumba this season, I think based off the numbers that we gave, you're probably looking at something like a D plus or a C minus. I, I'm, I may go the D plus route because like we said, the, the offensive numbers have just continued to plummet for Dumba uh, since, since he sustained that injury. He just has not been able to be that same player. And so the offensive numbers plummeted. The defensive numbers showed some potential as the season wore on into the postseason. And so um, I, I think I'll go D plus. But if you if you said C minus, that that wouldn't that wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. Um, but at the end of the day, it has been what we've seen from Dumba over the last four seasons since that happened in 2017, 2018. Just not really able to do a lot of what he had previously been able to do, which exposed some of his shortcomings um, defensively that were not really addressed until this season. So overall, D plus for Dumba feels feels right. And uh, it will be fascinating to see what comes next for Matt because I just don't see there being any way that, uh, that something can get worked out here. We'll talk about that to finish today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wilds. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wilds your first listen each and every day. For the everydayers, we'll dive into the news that is expected to be announced today that Brett McLean is going to be announced as the uh, new head coach of the Iowa Wild, which means that the Minnesota Wilds have a vacancy in their assistance position. So interesting discussion to be had there. We'll react to some of what we hear today from uh, Iowa Wild head coach Brett McClain on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Wild. So salary cap wise, Dumbo, of course, is an impending unrestricted free agent. And made 6 million on his most recent contract with the team. So what does his next deal look like? Well, first and foremost, I don't think it's likely at all that something gets done with Minnesota because you have limited cap funds as it is and you have more pressing matters to address than Matt Dumba and that's not to say that Losing Dumbo won't be a problem. It'll be, he'll be missed for what he brings both on and off the ice. But I just think that's a good spot to rely on some of your younger players. You've got Brock Faber, who is probably going to occupy that spot. And what we saw with Faber down the stretch into the postseason, very, very encouraging for what he can bring to the team. Now, there are a couple of arguments against Faber. He played kind of sheltered minutes on a third pairing. That's that's fair, but you got paired with the guy in John Klingberg who is like he he's he is as offensive defenseman as they come. And that pairing did not hurt you at all and that's in no small part to what Faber was able to do defensively. Now, is he going to have some growing pains? Perhaps, but that's just going to become a theme with this team over the next two seasons that you just have to give these guys an opportunity to build some experience and to see what they have at the NHL level. And so that's why I think you replace Matt Dumba with Brock Faber you put Kalen Addison on that third line pairing and whether it be Goligoski returning, John Merrill returning, personally, I'd like to see that money freed up. 
you you can find somebody else to play on that third pairing, but I think it shouldn't be at the expense of Brock Faber and Kalen Addison playing. Those guys need to be in the lineup, and so put them in first and then find somebody else to play on that third line pairing who's not going to be stealing minutes from those guys. So Dumba's spot, I think, is I, the spot on the ice is the easiest to fill. The biggest question is going to be, you know, what does the team leadership look like uh, with Dumba no longer an alternate captain? We've talked about the potential for Jared Spurgeon to maybe not be wild captain um, in previous episodes. And so do you do a major shuffle with, with Felino too as the alternate captain? Maybe there are other guys that are deserving of maybe wearing that, that alternate captain, um, that second one, if you choose to go that route. There are a lot of different ways that that can go, but the main part is, is that I don't think the Wild are going to retain Dumba's services because what's your price point? And how long of a contract are you looking to go for a guy who really looks like he has just not a lot of value offensively, maybe can do close to what he did down the stretch defensively, but he's he's a guy that just, I think we have seen plenty of what he is, and it's time now, I think, to just go in a different direction. There are plenty of teams out there that uh, will be looking for veteran defensemen. I mean, he's been linked to the Ottawa Senators plenty in previous off seasons. He's been linked to just about every team in the NHL with the trade rumors over the, uh, the last few seasons. And so do you go, does he go to Ottawa? Does he go to Calgary? Does he go to any other team looking for a veteran defenseman that can eat a ton of minutes that can be physical but then brings all those other things that uh, that kind of hold him back, the penalties and just the lack of offense. That's going to be the biggest thing. But I think there are enough teams in the NHL that are desperate enough for defensemen that will see what he did down the stretch and into the postseason and will say, there's still, there's still plenty there. There's still something that we can get out of, um, out of Matt Dumba. And so let's uh, let's give this a shot and try to uh, try to make something out of it. The main point is that let that be somebody else's let that be someone else's dilemma. Let that be discussion with other front offices, other general managers and head coaches. Let them deal with it because I think the Wild have I think they have a plan to fill that spot and I'd rather see them go younger and Save that money for Philip Gustafson or Brandon Duhame. Some of those guys that need to have extensions addressed this offseason and can be players that can actually give you something. And more importantly, can maybe start to elevate their play in bigger opportunities as opposed to just plopping a veteran player in a spot and saying, well, we're going with him because he's a veteran you've got to start playing the young guys at some point here. And so it was a great ride for Dumba. He was a, uh, a great offensive defenseman at the peak of his career, but he was, he was not that over the, uh, the last few seasons. And so it's just at this point, time to uh, time to say adios to, uh, to see what the, what free agency looks like. That'll be another thing that he, is experiencing for the first time. What is free agency like? It's it's just time. The the last chapter seemed like a logical point for this story to end. And so we wish Dumba well. He had some great years here, but it's just it's just time to move on. So there you have it for Dumba's eval for the 2022-2023 season. A reminder we will discuss the uh, new Iowa Wild head coach, which is, as Michael Russo has reported, as others have reported, expected to be a longtime Minnesota Wild assistant, Brett McLean. 
And so we'll uh, we'll take some of the uh, snippets from the press conference. We'll also look at what it means for the Minnesota Wild as well on tomorrow's episode of Locked on Wild. So make sure if you don't already that you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on your favorite podcast platforms so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. If this is your first time tuning in, we're glad you chose Locked on Wild today and hope that you listen to future episodes throughout the offseason into next year. If you are one of the everydayers that has made Lockdown Wild part of their daily routine, thanks for tuning in once again today, and we'll see you again tomorrow. You can find new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.